okay students we'll move on to the next topic that is performance so this is the last topic of first chapter module number one so over this performance topic we may expect four marks question that will be explain processor clock and basic performance equation now, apart from this two topics we'll also discuss performance measurement using spectrating okay so under the performance uh, we will start the discussion. So, processor time. What exactly this processor time stands for? Time taken by the processor to execute one program. Right? If I want to measure the performance of a student, then what I can do? I can ask some question over the previous class. Okay. So, on what manner, on what level the student is able to answer? Based on that, I can measure the performance of a student in the academics. Is it so now if I want to measure the performance of my system, what, what I should do? I need to give a piece of task for my system and I need to measure how fast it is able to execute the task. Okay, so that we are calling it as what processor time. Time taken by the processor to execute one complete program will be considered as processor time. Based on this time itself, we can measure what is the performance level of our system. Yeah. Okay. Several factors which will affect the performance of our processor or else processor time. Okay. So we listed over here. There are three main factors. Okay. Hardware, bus, and memory. What does this hardware stand for? Example, if you are using i5 processor, fine. And if you are using a 2 GB of a RAM, fine. Can you expect the complete performance of your system or complete performance of your processor or else you are using the upgraded version of your processor, upgraded version of your RAM. Apart from that, rest of all the devices, whatever we are using, they are all basic version. Then there will be a mismatch between the hardware. Okay, Due to this mismatch, the performance of your system will also drastically drop. Yeah? So hardware is a very important factor which will affect the performance of our system. Clear. Yeah. Then bus. What is the drawback of using bus over here? In previous lecture, we studied that we have a drawback of single bus structure. What is that? Only two devices can be active at a time. Okay, so to the alternate of that, we are including uh, the buffer register so that we can avoid the waiting loop of functional units. But still, some way we are lagging with the performance, the original performance of the functional units using bus cable. So to overcome this, what we can do instead of going for only single bus structure, we can go for multiple bus structure. Then obviously the performance can be boosted. Then later, when it comes for memory, okay, while discussing the main uh, functional units, we discuss like there will be a hierarchy for a memory. What is that? Like uh, primary catch, secondary catch, main memory, and secondary memory. Primary catch stands for the general purpose register which are residing inside the processor. While discussing the basic operational concept in the block diagram inside the processor along with the control unit, arithmetic logical unit, MAR, MDR, program counter, and instruction register, we had n general purpose registers available. Right? Those we can consider it as the primary catch, which is very close to the processor. And apart from this primary catch, we have a secondary catch, which is right next to the processor and very close to the processor, the second one, okay, who is in the second position, that we are calling it as a catch memory, or else simply we call it as secondary catch. Then later, main memory, and at last, the secondary storage device is over. The working principle of this memory is the content, whatever which is residing inside the secondary storage, that should be brought into main memory, main memory to the catch, catch to the primary catch. Finally, processor will utilize the operands okay, and it will generate the result over there. So, if you are using a proper kind of or as the advanced kind of memory system over here, then obviously we can expect the best performance from our processor. Otherwise, okay, we need to face Otherwise, we need to face lagging in the processor performance time. 
So next, we go for processor clock. This is very important, fine. Uh, like regularly asked question in your extreme exam, the model number one, one fixed question will be there over the processor clock. Okay, it may vary like two to three marks sometimes. So usually it will be for two marks. What is this processor clock? Let's see this. Processor circuits are controlled by a timing signal called clock. Fine. Here we are using a time duration or timing signal which will control your processor circuit. You see that? What is that? The clock defines regular time intervals called clock cycle. The clock defines regular time intervals called clock cycle. What does this clock cycle stand for? It is the time duration. Remember this cycle means what starting from one point and we are reaching the same means elapsed time we can call it as okay clock cycle means it is a duration starting at zero and we are coming back to the zero itself cycle it is okay from where you are starting where itself we are going to end and again we are starting from the same location okay so clock cycle means it is a piece of time duration that's it then later to execute a machine instruction, the processor divides, this is very important, I read it again, just observe. To execute a machine instruction, the processor divides the action to be performed into a sequence of basic steps, such that each step can be completed in one clock cycle. See, we discussed what is clock cycle. What is a clock cycle means? It is a piece of time duration. So what your processor should do is, whatever the machine instruction he got to execute. So you need to divide that processor, or so you need to divide that instruction into uh, like different actions, okay? Or else we call it a sequence of action or sequence of basic step, okay? If one by one we start executing that step, finally we are going to execute the complete machine instruction. Example, we have a chocolate, okay? We are going to making it of pieces. Okay, one chocolate, four pieces. Okay, and we will start eating each and every pieces and finally we are going to finish it off. Right? Like that, your processor, whenever it receives a machine instruction, it used to divide that instruction into several pieces. Then later, each and every pieces, okay, will be called as a sequence of basic steps. Fine? So these basic steps are able to be executed within this one clock cycle. Remember this. Okay. We need to divide the machine instruction in such a way that in one clock cycle, one such sequence piece should be executed. Like that, we need to go for the division over there. So yeah, now I hope you got some idea what exactly clock cycle is. Fine? Okay, now, what does this clock rate stand for? Okay, clock rate, we are mentioning with capital R. Clock rate is denoted by capital R. What does this stand for? Okay. Clock rate will be called as one divided by P. Okay, and this clock rate we are measuring for per second. That one, what we have, it is nothing but one second. Clock rate is equal to this is one second should be divided by P. What does this P stand for? P is the length of one clock cycle. See, clock cycle means it is a small time duration within which one basic step of machine instruction can be completed understood okay now we need to analyze within one second how many such clock cycle we can create it means in one second how many basic step we can execute that is what the clock rate stands for and it is denoted as capital r r is equal to one divided by p P is nothing but what? The length of one clock cycle. Length of one clock cycle. Remember this because in next topic also we are using capital R. Okay. Now, cycle per second is called hertz. We need to measure, right? We need to have some measuring unit over here. What is the measuring unit we are using over here? Hertz. Now, if your system or if your processor is able to create such kind of clock cycles how many one million i repeat if your processor is able to execute such kind of clock cycle how many one million then it will be called as mega okay it will be called as mega 
fine if your processor is able to execute such kind of clock cycles remember clock cycle is nothing but we are executing basic steps of machine instruction execution of basic steps remember this okay such kind of clock cycle how many we can within one second one billion okay within one second one billion clock cycle if you can complete then it is denoted by giga i repeat if your processor is able to execute one million basic steps of machine instruction okay then it will be called as mega if your processor is able to execute one billion machine instruction basic step then it will be called as giga okay because of this reason whenever we try to find the specification of our system there will be some way mentioned that 2.4 gigahertz 3.5 gigahertz what does it mean 3. Point, sorry in this example 2.4 i have mentioned 2.4 billion clock cycle we can execute within one second i repeat 2.4 billion clock cycle we can execute within one second because of this we are naming it as 2.4 gigahertz one small assignment for each and every student fine of third semester csc try to find the specification of your system fine and oh, somewhere it will be mentioned like the speed of your of your system is like something like 2.4 gigahertz 3.5 gigahertz 3.6 gigahertz okay try to find it yeah will be mentioned okay next topic is basic performance equation what is this basic performance equation so using this we are trying to find the time taken by your system to complete the machine instruction or as a complete program okay we have a task like one complete program we have that we need to execute and i want to find what will be the total duration taken by the processor to complete this particular task okay so the formula is very important formula it is t it should be in capital everything should be in capital capital t will be equal to capital n into capital s divided by r okay out of this four different places which is known r we are known with what is this clock rate okay r stand for clock rate what is the value of r 1 divided by p exactly right okay let it be we'll see this what does n stand for actual number of machine instruction n stand for actual number of machine instruction according to my example we are assigning a complete one program for execution fine out of that how many number of machine instructions are there that we need to find okay so that will be the capital n how many number of machine instructions are there that will be called as capital n then individual machine instruction how many basic steps we need to execute them okay so number of instruction we are finding then s stand for what basic steps needed to execute one instruction this we need to find that will be called as s number of instruction basic steps we need to uh, execute one instruction then later processor clock r represents clock rate per second okay so this is what the performance of your system and this is what the piece of information what we are assigning for our system so that we can check the performance of our processor then if you multiply number of instruction into number of basic steps divided by capital r then whatever the answer you are getting that will be the time taken by your processor to complete the particular task clear okay then with the last topic performance measurement so here uh, we got total four points over here benchmark programs time taken to execute benchmark program by sample computer system performance equation sorry system performance evaluation corporation spec we call it as the shortcut we are using as a spec so here we got some benchmark program like spec 89 spec 95 spec 2000 right this way we are called also calling it as suits okay spec 89 suit 89 suit 95 suit 2000 okay so don't worry about this much okay so here uh, the new system the new configuration whatever we are manufacturing right 
as per the manufacturing of a system, you need to check whether the systems are working properly or what. Right? So, here we are designing some benchmark programs. That is nothing but spec 89, spec 95, spec 2000. So, these are called as spec suit or as suit uh, programs. And also, we are calling it as benchmark program. So, what we need to do is we need to execute this benchmark program in previous system, like already the advanced kind of system, whatever we are using, okay, which is perfectly working in 360 degree, fine. What is the time taken by that perfect system to execute this benchmark program? And what is the time taken by the new system what we are manufacturing now? Okay, that we need to find. And these two should be compared. Based on that, we are going to provide the rating for our new system. Yeah, so what we need to do? We need to manufacture a new system, okay, fine, with well-defined configuration. We need to provide a benchmark program for the processor to execute it, okay. Now, what we need to do is, time taken to execute benchmark program by sample computer, that we need to find, okay. The benchmark program, which is submitted for the processor, okay. For executing that, what was the time duration taken by the new system, that we need to note. Yeah, okay. And we need to substitute it for a spec rating formula over here. What does the spec rating formula stand for? See, yeah, at last we have spec rating will be equal to running time on the reference computer. See, here reference computer stands for uh, the computer which is totally perfect and we are already checked with the performance of the system. It is working superb. Okay, such kind of system we are calling it as reference computer. Okay, so based on the reference of this computer itself, we are trying to manufacture a few other systems over yeah, a copy of that. You can call it like a master uh, system we are having and the copy of that we are going to create over there. Okay, now the same bit example, I'm going to take the suit of 2000, spec 2000 we are going to take. Okay, according to my example, spec 2000 I will take. So spec 2000 uh, benchmark program will be executed by this reference computer. You need to note the time, example like five seconds it took to get to execute. It should be divided by uh, the time which was noted in the previous, uh, like uh, when, when we were executing the benchmark program in the reference computer, uh, sorry, uh, testing computer, okay, that we need to divide. Okay, so here the formula is running time on the reference computer should be divided by running time on the testing computer. So whatever the result we are getting, that we are specifying it as spec rating. That we are specifying it as spec rating. If the spec rating is up to the mark, then the system will be released for the market. Otherwise, we need to do some manipulation so that we can reach this spec rating. Fine. In your textbook, there is one more formula. Okay, please go through that. If you find any difficulty to understand, please find out. Yeah. So this is what the first chapter of computer organization is. Fine. From the next class, we'll go through some number system, like how the uh, number and characters will be stored in the memory then how we can read the memory location, basic version we are going to learn from the model number one. And later, uh, for accessing the memory location, what are the different kinds of addressing modes are available? That is very, very important. Okay, regarding that, we'll have a discussion. And stack and queues, how we can utilize these two data structure in our computer organization at the machine level in section. Then very important topic, subroutine also we will discuss. Okay, so that will finish your model number one. Fine. If you find any difficulty to understand any topic, please contact me. Fine. Okay, student, this is off now. Thank you.